Everybody loves those hot shit arpeggios that we hear guys like Marty Friedman and Yolo Mouse Meat play across the neck, but it can be really tough to memorize those things. Are you looking for certain sets of notes? Are you looking for certain intervals or shapes? What's going on? It can be overwhelming, but in this video I'm going to show you guys the easiest way to learn how to connect those shapes, start flying all over the neck of the guitar in no time. <laughs> Hey the kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. I don't know about you guys, but every time I hear those wicked two-string arpeggios and solos like Tornado of Souls by Megadeth, my big toe shoots up in my boot. And I want to make that sound, because I'm a fan of making other big toes shoot up in other boots, or other footwear apparel. And after you watch this video, so can you. Follow the steps I'm going to outline in this video, and I guarantee you're going to become an arpeggio master, or I'll offer you a full refund on what it costs you to watch this video. Guaranteed. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Guitars. People are saying it's the greatest place on the internet, and I intend to keep it that way. Sign up today for all kinds of goodies like bonus videos, backing tracks, downloadable attempts, and so much more. This week, all of my patrons are going to get a very special bonus video to go along with this one, showing you guys how to use and abuse some of these two-string arpeggio shapes in various different configurations of our heroes. So don't delay. Sign up today. Gear-wise, I'll be playing my ancient Ibanez RG550 with the Fishman Fluence pick-em-ups into the Fractal Audio Axe FX3. Now let's get into it. Yo guys, video editor Uncle Ben here. Quick note about this. I noticed after I stopped recording this video that my audio did not record. My computer just stopped recording audio out of nowhere. Uh, probably because I'm using the same Mac that you guys have seen me use the entire length of my channel and more. That Mac is from 2012. Still going. Kind of strong. This hadn't happened in a long time. Anyway, so I'm just going to be using camera audio for all my guitar stuff here. Sorry to deal with a little clicky-picky stuff. You get what you pay for. The first thing that you got to understand if you want to know about arpeggios is thirds. Now, I wouldn't go asking your sister about thirds as she gave her word to stop at third. And we all know how that turned out. A third is a very specific type of musical interval, and there's two different types of them. We call it a third because it's the distance from the first note of a major scale, like let's say this A, to its third note. One, two, three, one, three. We call this interval a third, or major third. You could look at it as being two whole steps, whatever you want to call it. I definitely wouldn't try to learn it as fretboard numbers like 5-9. Don't do it that way because that'll be a different set of numbers for every position you're in. So just look at it as that distance right there. The other type of third is a flattened third, or as most people call it, a minor third. All you got to do is to take that third thing that you just found and lower the high note one half step. So that is our minor third. It's one and a half steps away from the root note. So we have major third, minor third. If you can understand and see those distances on the fretboard, then you're ready for step two, the formulas for major and minor arpeggios, which are going to use those third type distances that we're talking about. So let's take a look at the formula for major arpeggios. We're going to do A major. We're going to start off on the note A. Then what we're going to do is to go up a major third, then go up a minor third. So it's root note, major third, minor third. The next note would be that root note up top again. You can easily visualize that if you think of it this way. You are on the second dot of the first 12 frets, the big neck of the guitar. So go to the second dot on the little neck of the guitar, the second 12 frets, same note. So root, major third, minor third, root. From there, the formula would repeat. Root, major third, minor third, and uh, I think that note's only audible to dogs and your stepmom. That's going to hold true for any major chord. So if we were doing F, we could play F, major third, minor third, same root note an octave higher. Root, major third, minor third, and so on. And because somebody's going to blast me for it in the comments, let me just explain. Whenever we do that, we are playing the root, third, and fifth of that arpeggio. Are you satisfied, Adam Neely viewers? I hope so. 
Now the formula for minor arpeggios is the same, but reversed. Check this out. If we're playing A minor this time, play A, and then flip it. You remember how it went major third, minor third for major chords? It goes minor third, major third for minor chords. Root, minor third, then eyeball what that major third would look like. Root, minor third, major third, root note but higher, minor third, major third. Uh, you could do that with another one, like let's say, uh, do something weird like G minor. Start off on a G note, minor third, major third. So in summary, major chords go root, major third, minor third. Minor chords go root, minor third, major third. Now that you know the formulas, let's play around on one string. We're gonna use our high E string for these examples here. Let's start with A major. And what I want you guys to do is to start really hardcore visualizing those gaps, those major thirds, minor thirds, etc. So we're gonna play root, major third, minor third, root. That'll be enough to start with right there. Now what I want you guys to do is first just to play around on that string right there with those two notes at a time. So in other words, take the first two notes of the arpeggio and just play around there. Now move your first finger to where your little finger was and visualize the next jump. Remember it's minor third this time. After this, move your first finger up to where your little finger was and visualize the next jump, which is just going to be that high root note again, right? Again, second dot, second dot. So our first one was major third, minor third, root. You could even restart from there, major third, minor third and so on. Now that you can visualize that jumping third thing better, you're ready to start completing these arpeggios using the next string. And the cool thing about this is it's a very specific order that these things go in and it's pretty easy to memorize. There's only three different shapes that you can learn for these basic major arpeggios. Let me show you guys how to complete them using the next string up. So whenever we have our first interval shape here, right, our root major third, Whenever you're playing that distance right there, the shape that's gonna complete it is what I call the stack. What you're gonna do is off of your first finger, just play the note that's on the B string. So our root major third shape is the stack. Now, whenever you're playing around with this gap, you're gonna play what I call the Cliff Burton surprise. Notice how I put my middle finger right here on the B string. Call it Cliff Burton surprise because it reminds me of anesthesia pulling teeth, you know? That kind of arpeggio shape that he does. So you got the stack connected to the Cliff Burton. Now whenever you're playing around with the big stretchy shape up here, which goes all the way up to the root note, this is the annoying one. It's really an asymmetrical kind of shape. Notice how the middle finger is a whole step above the first finger's note. I just call that the asymmetrical shape or the ugly one. The ugly one! So from our first shape, we got the stack. From our second shape, we got the Cliff Burton. From our third shape, we got the ugly one! Now let's repeat the same stuff, but only with the minor variation, because we're metal, and we don't like major. Okay, so again, here's the gaps. Root note, minor third, major third. Root note, minor third, major third, play around at the intervals. Now 
and that's kind of our starting point. Now off of the first shape that we played, we're once again gonna have the stack. In this case, it's pretty much like what you did for the major one, where you're gonna have the same fret on the B string. After this, you're gonna move to the second shape, right? This is the Cliff Burton surprise. Your middle finger is gonna be playing on the B string here, which is two frets above where your first finger is. So our first shape produced the stack. Second shape, produce the Cliff Burton. Now the third shape, whenever you go from the E note to the A note right here, the big stretchy guy, this is once again the asymmetrical shape, or the ugly one! And this time it's a little bit even more uglier. This is a nasty one to play because your middle finger just needs to be one fret above your first. That one is pretty brutal. I kind of avoid that one just because it's such a pest to play, but that's how you would do it. So first shape is stack. Second shape, Cliff Burton. Third shape. The ugly one! And that is how you're gonna start mastering some arpeggios today. Now these shapes that we're talking about, these are gonna apply no matter what string set you're on, with one exception, of course. So if like, let's say you were playing around with a D minor arpeggio, with this root on the G string right here, that's again gonna be root note, minor third, major third, as your starting points. And those shapes are gonna attach the same way there. You're gonna have the stack. The next one here, you're gonna have the Cliff Burton. The next one's gonna be the ugly one. Maybe I'm doing G major, root, major third, minor third, root. I could visualize that as stack. The next one, Cliff Burton. The next one. The really offset. Ugly one. Yeehaw. Only exception to this is, of course, the naughty B string. This is a huge pain. Just don't play them on those strings, really, because these become really unwieldy. Like if I was doing the A minor, it wouldn't make a stack. It would have to be like this. Um, if I was doing the next shape, that one's not too bad. And then the last one, I don't know, you just don't really see players use them very much on that string set, simply because the shapes all have to be changed due to the tuning of the guitar. Now the cool thing about this is, the order of that shapes is set in stone for any arpeggio and all of its inversions. So if you find yourself in one particular shape, you kind of automatically know what happened before it and what's happening after it. So for example, uh, Marty Friedman starts off that Tornado of Souls arpeggio section with this B minor right here, right? <laughs> That's the Cliff Burton. So you know that before it, you had the stack. And you'll know if you move up, you're gonna have the ugly one. Old Marky Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits, he starts off that Sultan's of Swing solo right here with this D minor, right? So you automatically know it's gonna follow the stack the Cliff Burton. You know it's gonna follow the Cliff Burton. The ugly one! That was going that order. So if you know where you're at in that sequence, you automatically know what you can go to next in either direction. Now that's some hot shit. So there you go guys, the secrets of the arpeggio stars that can change your life and turn you into a more better shredder. Pretty cool, right? I find that approach to be so much easier than trying to visualize the two string shapes as belonging to some larger five or six string arpeggio, or going on a scavenger hunt looking for certain sets of notes on different string sets. That's all annoying to me. 
I think it's easier to see this as a very head bone connected to the neck bone, connected to the, I don't know what it goes through after that, I was homeschooled. But it's easier to see them as shapes that connect than going on a scavenger hunt every time you're trying to play an arpeggio. Let me know how this works out for you guys and get even more out of it by checking out that Patreon exclusive video over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Guitars. Tons of bonus lessons, downloadable temps, backing tracks, all kinds of goodies are waiting for you over there. Be sure to like the channel, subscribe. A lot of you guys aren't subscribed. Mash that subscribe button, that way you get notified every time I upload a new slice of fried gold, especially if you ring that bell down there, Anita Ward style, ring my bell. Be sure to do that. Helps my video show up in the feeds and uh, helps you become the next Shreddy Kruger. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys over on the Patreon page. Get away from here, get that guitar, do some shredding. Less clicking, more picking.